and welcome to the How to Spark Success podcast series. I'm your host Liz Hamlet and I'm a success coach and business mentor. I'm also founder of Spark Succeed. So I've got a real treat for you today um, in my podcast um, guest um, in this podcast series where we have conversations with smart and savvy business owners. So my guest today is a TV presenter that you'll know her face very well. She's a travel and property expert um, and she's also also a business owner of the fantastic Lord Roberts on the green that does some of the best cakes I've ever seen um, on Instagram so check those out and she's also a pilot in training so welcome Laura Hamilton how are you oh thank you what an introduction I love that yes some of the best cakes on Instagram I love that too oh yeah and I need, need to get down, down. <laughs> What, what a great thing. I love it. I love your podcast. It's brilliant. Uh, thank you. Well, thank you so much for being a guest. So we've had a bit of a chat before, um, but be really interested in you. You know, obviously we talked about people know you very well from Place in the Sun, but there's so much more that you're doing. So you just want to tell us a bit about, you know, some of the business things that you're doing at the moment and also sort of your journey of how you got to do this. Wow, okay. Um, so where do I start? And I like to talk, so beware, you might have to, uh, <laughs> might have to interject. Um, yeah, so obviously I am part of A Place in the Sun. I've been part of A Place in the Sun uh, for eight years now, um, incredibly, and that time has flown. And um, people may or may not know that I, I'm not just a TV presenter. I joined A Place in the Sun as somebody with property experience. So I bought my first property. I got on a property ladder at age 19. And again, like, don't ask me why or how that even happened. I just had this thing in my head when I was like 15, 16 years old, <laughs> which is when I, when I got my first part-time job, that I, I wanted to own a property. I wanted to get on the, on the property ladder. And, and that's when I bought my first house, age 19. And so throughout the years, I mean, I joined a place in the sun eight, eight years ago and, I, and I'm 30, um, 38 now. Um, do you like the pause that I gave I you? I know, there? I was going to say, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, no, 30, 30, 38. So I um, joined eight years ago and um, I think I've renovated in total like 16 properties to date. And that includes a commercial um, business um, uh, building that was three and a half four years ago now so yeah I did have property background and experience before joining the show um but like way back before that I started um in tv when I was 18 as a runner behind the scenes but I always knew that you had to have multiple streams of of income it couldn't just be you know one I think nobody has one career for life anymore do they so um you know I love my job in, in TV, but by the time I was 19, I, I bought a property and I guess these two sort of things were running along aside each other. I became a kids TV presenter. I was in kids TV. Uh, well, I worked behind the scenes. So I worked behind the scenes in TV from age 18 to 22. And I worked on some, you know, amazing shows like from Top of the Pops to EastEnders, Harry Potter films. I, I was sort of directing background. And at 20, 21, 22, I got a break as a kids TV presenter, but was still doing sort of property behind the scenes of that. And so I was a kids TV presenter and then I ended up in Dancing on Ice. And it was, it was great because I met the place for, um, I met the team for a place in the sun a year before I took part in Dancing on Ice. And it just so happened that I had this property background and a place in the sun, we're looking for a new presenter. And I somehow managed to, join my sort of my two careers yeah. really together so um that's how I sort of ended up where I am but there is a lot more to me than just property and a place in the sun because as I said four three and a half four years ago I um I live in Purley on um on a place called the Web Estate in Purley yeah. and our local village shop which was in disrepair and closing down um just needed someone to come along and rescue it really and i said to my husband do you know what we could do something amazing like why don't we buy it it was a it was a post office and a village shop and i thought do you know what it warrants something really special in the area that would bring the community together there was a coffee shop a deli we'll bring the post office back um there was a bit of a development project with it to create a house and a flat and i said let's do it 
my daughter was seven months old. So I've got two children, Rocco and Talia, who are now uh, five and six. So at the time, Talia was seven months old. And uh, Alex said to me, what do you mean? Like, what are you talking about? Like, we can't, we can't buy it. Like, you've, never, you've never run a restaurant. You've never owned a coffee shop. You've never employed people. You might have renovated property, but that's a whole different ball game. And I was like, that's the worst thing anyone could say to me. You can't do it. I'm like, because that makes me so motivated, so driven to say, actually, do you know what we can? And I think that's the key thing in business that you've got to have a can do attitude. And so I was like, no, we can do it. And I'm going to become the postmistress and I'm going to do all the exams. And we're going to, we're going to bring back this, we're going to create a coffee shop daily. We're going to employ local people and we're going to make it a, a real amazing place for the community. And I did the exams. I have qualified as a postmistress. <laughs> and a year after the post office being open, it unfortunately um, didn't didn't work that side of the business. And you know, you learn all the time whether you're developing a property or you're setting up a business. And there are elements of, that it, of it that work and elements that don't. Post office side didn't work, but the other side of it did. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, right, do you know what? We're going to run with this. Let's push this side of the business. And that's kind of where we are today. We, um, we're a business that survived through these crazy last few months, had to adapt. Yeah. Um, but it's a coffee shop, a deli, a restaurant. We got an alcohol license for it a year ago. Um, but we don't, we, we do a few pop-up restaurants in the evening. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I can't believe really. I mean, we went from employing, we had 27 staff at one point, which I'd never believed that, you know, you could have in a, in a coffee shop and in a little village coffee shop, but we did. So, you know, there's that on the side and obviously still very much involved in TV and, um, place in the sun, which I'll be going back to, uh, very, very soon and love property and interior design. Most importantly, I love my kids, you know, like I'm a mum and I, I think I, I thrive on the juggle. So yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it comes across that when you know we were talking earlier, just you know, just thriving on being busy and sort of challenges and and everything. So how you know all your different businesses and your different hats on? How have you sort of balanced that during lockdown? How's that been impacted by lockdown? Well, I think in in lockdown for me, obviously, a place in the sun was parked. Yeah. You know, no one could travel anywhere, and so it's like it's still there. And actually, I tell you what, it's been the most incredible show to have been part of in this this period because it's the kind of tv that everyone's wanted to watch the escapism the feel good and um i know that the ratings have flown like gone through the roof so um it's that's you know that's been great and also it's it's that's so positive and inspirational tv and that kind of is who i am as a person you know i'm always glass half full and i'm always have that i'm annoying kids tv presenter smile on your face you know but i am I, I like i i do wake up in the morning and i am happy and i'm like do you know what let's deal with whatever's thrown at me just give me the challenge and we'll get through it and you're only here once so you've got to enjoy it yeah and so you know through lockdown with the place in the sun being parked obviously it was like okay we've got a coffee shop and a restaurant and a a village shop loosely that we're being told we're going to have to close let's think quickly here let's flip it let's turn it back into the village shop let's start delivering out to the community who don't have access to an online shop can't get to the supermarket because there are a lot of elderly people that have used our shop you know we've got really good um relationships with lots of the customers and it was like let's do something to actually help people whether we're making money or not all you know i didn't care about that i was like look as long as we break even you know actually it doesn't matter i'd rather you have to you have to at times give back and we do that through lord roberts all the time we have charity events and um you know i sell clothes don't that i've worn on a place in the sun that i can't wear again and we donate the money to charity mm -hmm. so it's like do you know what let's let's use our business and instead of getting the food in from our suppliers to create the dishes that we create, let's get in fruit and veg and deliver that out. So, um, again, my husband, who always says to me, Laura, what on earth? Like, you're nuts. What are you doing now? It's never going to work. He just, he's brilliant because he just went, do you know what? Run with it. Do what it, He's like, sure, baby, you run with it. You do whatever you, you think. 
So in 24 hours, we flipped it around and we started delivering out. And in a matter of days, he said to me, I know I don't, I know I don't say to you enough, Laura, actually what you've done is amazing. But he was like, it really is amazing what we're doing and we should be proud of it. And it doesn't matter if we're you know, not making money, if we just break even, or even if we lose a bit of money, it doesn't matter because we're helping people. And I was like, yes, yes, <laughs> you know. Um, but I think that's so, really useful to have, isn't it, in the partnership of, you know, you being sort of, you know, the go-getter and that I'm going to do it, you know, motivational and he's sort of just the, you know, calm, because from what you said, realist and, you know, oh, that right. balance it, is really good. I couldn't have another one like him in the house, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> as much as sometimes I, I go, oh, come on, like, come on, we can do it, you know, it's fun. Actually, you know, the flip side of that, that is why it works because yeah. he just lets me be me. And, you know, he, he says to me sometimes, like, you go, 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 go. Like, I never know what you're going to do next. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, no, it's, it, it does work. So that's good. <laughs> that's amazing. We've survived lockdown, I think. Yes. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. So obviously, like, you know, running the business, we adapted it then. And then, when the government changed what was going to happen and um, what we could do and what, you know, you could open, it, it really felt like it being a small business owner that every week you would have to adapt and change depending on like what, what rules were this week and what rules were that week. And one of the things that upset me most um, about it is because we, our business is right opposite a village green, which is beautiful. Um, the amount of rubbish and I know I've heard a few people on social media talk about people not giving, you know, any care to the environment and just like littering everywhere. Like even those beaches, you know, in Bournemouth and Weymouth, like the disgusting behaviour that people, things people are doing. And you know, I've, I've been picking up rubbish off the village green and, and I just think, oh, like, why, why take home your rubbish? We put signs up everywhere, but you can't, you can only ask people to do so much. And yeah. if they can't be responsible for their own actions, then you, know, you can't, you can't do anything more than that. But it has been a challenge and it's still a challenge because we've got more rules now more things that are coming into place and changing from, you know, this 50% uh, off Monday to Wednesday for a, a restaurant and you know, 5%, you know, VAT only in August. So it's, you just kind of think, okay, this is great, but you know, our accountants got stuff, more stuff to deal with now. And um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's, I love a challenge though. I yeah, that comes that. across definitely. <laughs> and, and with that in mind, um, what do you think has been the biggest factor in your success? Because you've talked about a number of things, but what would you sort of, if you had to pin it down to one thing, what would you say? I, I think in any industry, no matter what you do, it's your attitude, having, you know, a can-do attitude, thinking I'm not going to be beaten by negativity, um, by criticism, because you have to accept no matter what you do, whatever industry you're in, you're never going to be able to please 100% of people 100% of the time. So, you know, as long as you know that what you're doing, you know, you've got a good heart and you're like, do you know what, I'm doing it for a reason, um, then go for it. And also I would say something that's really, really important to me that isn't necessarily important to everyone, but it is to me, again, no matter what industry you are in, know what everyone does at every single level. Now I started as a runner in TV, making teas and coffees for Dermot O'Leary. He was one of the people that I used to, to make tea and coffee for. And I always respected Dermot so much because I thought, you know what, he's such a lovely person. He had so much time to, to give to every single person on the crew you know he'd speak to them he'd find out their names how, ask them how their day was he actually cared and I just thought I, do you know what I want to take that away from you I think that's you're you know that's really incredible and I think I've been a runner and I've worked at the bottom you know junior, most junior position and I have been an assistant director and you know now I'm I'm lucky enough to do presenting and I come I'm quite creative so I'm coming up with program pictures and ideas and in the, the same in the shop. I am not afraid to jump in my shop as I did yesterday. I was like the number two in the kitchen helping Julie who was, you know, making the food. I was like, right, what needs doing? I'm in there. The washing up, I'm in there. Like collecting the rubbish top of the green. Like I would do it because actually I think your team then respects you. And, and 
even though you are the business owner, even you, you know, you might think I'm the most senior position, you're still a member of the team. And the success, the success of your business won't be a success unless everyone in that cog in the wheel is like all working together and all on the same page. And I, I, and I just think you need to treat your, your, your team, your staff like well too. Yeah. Con, you know, re like reward people when, when you're, you're appreciative of what they've done. And, and I think they appreciate that when they see me, you know, being in there, being involved because they see that I care too. Yeah. And I think, you know, uh, there's, um, you know, a lot of business owners that would do a sort of similar thing where they would invest and, you know, just get, um, you know, designers in and sort of leave a team to run it and only sort of do sort of fly by visits. But I think, you know, the fact that you're heavily involved, and I know you are, you know, from everything you're doing, I see a lot of updates um, from you. And I, I'm sure the team um, really sort of respect that. So um, I do, I do think it sort of does depend on what your business is, though, and, and what you want from your business because for me like I'm I'm really I'm a really passionate positive person and I would say that I, I genuinely love what I do whether I'm in the shop you know serving the customers or cooking the food or you know I'm I'm with my kids and we're okay I didn't love homeschooling too much <laughs> but you know or we're, we're doing something creative I'm singing and dancing with my daughter or I'm presenting a place in the sun I for me I'm like I love like I genuinely genuinely I'm loving what I'm doing and so it doesn't really feel like work it doesn't feel like work and and actually there's something I really want to instill in my in my children I want them to to find something that just makes them happy because I think if you do something you love you'll make a success of it anyway there's that amazing video, isn't there? I don't know if, if you've seen it. Is it the Alan Alan Watts? What if money were no object? I love that video. Like I absolutely love that video. So I just think, do something you love, and and you'll be successful. Yeah, definitely. And I think you know, um, I since I've been sort of running this business, it's it is you know stuff. I get to talk to amazing people and learn you know about what different people are doing, like like yourself. But you know, just you know, you know that you're making an impact. So one of the things I've seen that um, you've been doing over lockdown is um, your personal training um, online for people yeah. um, on lockdown. But um, what would you? Um, what other sort of success habits have you got on a daily, weekly basis? you know what that was so kind of weird really the the um the fitness thing because i love fitness i've always been into um exercise and um trying to eat well as i'm slipping away or <laughs> slurping away yeah, that's just of gin here um <laughs> But like the, the fitness thing, I just thought, oh, do you know what? I again, that's something that I want to try and do. I mean, I'm not really known for that. I'm not known massively for fitness, but I just thought, oh well, I'm going to do it every Sunday, and maybe people want to join in and work out with me. And so we did, and it was only last last Sunday that I thought, okay, now I've got to, I've got to just, I've got a pack actually for going away to Spain until September. So. I need to maybe just give myself a week of, of not committing to that. That's not to say that I haven't exercised this week, yeah. although I feel like running around at a million miles an hour often is enough exercise. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, what other successes in my, in my week? What do you, what do you, what do you mean exactly? Oh, okay. Like what success habits? So, you know, you talked about exercise sort of setting you up for the day and that it's something. Oh, okay. So. Okay. Um, well, yeah, I think like exercise obviously is great because of, of endorphins. Um, I'd actually, I'd been, I'd started to drink ketones. Ah, yeah, is, I've watched is, a bit about that recently. Yeah, so there seems to be a lot of people at the moment that are, are drinking ketones. And um, again, that's sort of incorporated into your diet and prolonging, you know, your energy and, and how you work. So, um I guess that I brought that into, and I do, I have multivitamins, mm. I, you know, I have a, what I would say for me is in lockdown or out of lockdown, whatever, I've always grown up with a mum 
who has said, you know what, Laura, you wake up in the morning, you get up, you get ready, you shower, you put your makeup on. You know, she said, when I had, um, so I've got a brother who's 14 months younger than me. She said, when I had you and, and your brother, Luke, I, I had you and then I was in the hospital and visitors were coming and I had my makeup on and I was ready to see everyone. And um, people were like, oh, wow. Look. And I think it, that, that for me is what I've, I've always kind of taken from her and kind of run with. Um, you know, again, my mother-in-law's the same. Like she's immaculate. She always looks great. She cares. And I think yeah. I, I couldn't have done that in lockdown. I know that everyone approached it differently. But, you know, I, I woke up in the morning and I had my routine. My children had the routine. For me, I, am, I have to have... I have to know what I'm doing I think because I've got so much going on so that that was the way I kind of I got through it and I did have people say to me in lockdown what are you dressed up for like where are you going and I'm like nowhere I'm just up and I'm ready for the day mm -hmm. and that's the way that I you know I kind of I guess it's quite uplifting it's positive and you know I, I got on with stuff yeah I'm totally with you there. I'm, like, I'm delivering cucumbers to Dorothy <laughs> all right and you know she wants to see that i've taken care of myself <laughs> yeah i'm totally with you because you know i do a lot of, obviously i do um, a lot of online um, work particularly during lockdown but you know i'm always sort of dressed for you know work and looking yeah. presentable i do do a lot of stuff you know not so much as you on professional camera but you know i do a lot of video calls a lot of you know recording so I always you don't really even have to it doesn't even have to be for you know professional on camera you know it, for me I genuinely like I was like well I am I'm not joking I am delivering you know vegetables fruit and veg to whoever in the community and I you know I want to look presentable when I get there and so you know it, I just think it doesn't matter what you do to take pride and in your appearance and care when you wake up in the morning is a, is a good way to kind of making you feel like right I'm ready for the day let's let's yeah let's uh, go with this whatever's thrown at me amazing um, and you know I'm sure sort of during your career you know, you've listened to a lot of advice from other people so what would you say has been the best piece of advice that you've received about sort of being successful in business oh, I think um, probably well, loads of bits of advice but accepting there's going to be highs and lows and you'll win some you'll lose some and it's it's all about riding the wave really um, and hopefully coming out you know on top at the end um, but even you know, some of the most successful business people I know have been rock bottom so many times and yet they have picked themselves up and and they seem to get there again and, and I, I think this situation lockdown has actually been really really interesting obviously it's been so challenging for so many businesses but with friends that have got their own businesses i have said to a few of them do you know what if we can get through this if you can ride the wave and come out the other side i think your business will be better for it um but yeah again i'd say you know another bit of advice is accept that you're not going to please everyone you know you can't ex you can't think that you're going to make a hundred percent of people a hundred percent happy all the time like you will get negativity and um you have to take the bits on board that you think you need to but you you accept that it is what it is and as long as you you're doing what you feel is best and you you can't do anything more than that that's amazing um, and just sort of finally um what advice would you give to people listening today that have either set up a business or are thinking about set up a business would you, what would you give a sort of gem of your advice well i i i obviously have have only ever really been self-employed like even though I've worked for Channel 4 from age 18 and I've all, I was freelance and then um, I'm freelance now and then obviously I'm a, a director of a few companies that I've set up and I wouldn't have it any other way I there are negatives that come with it you know you don't get holiday pay you don't get sick pay um, However, I, you know, I love being my own boss mm -hmm. and in control of things. Um, but you, it, I do, it does take a certain type of person. Mm -hmm. And again, I'd say this is why it really works with my husband and I, because he, work, he, he although he's a director, obviously, of our business, 
he also has a job employed by someone else. So have I actually with a place in the sun, you know, I'm not the boss of that company. So, but he has a very different like attitude to me and you know he does get ho does get paid holiday but then he has to think you know quite carefully about you know when he puts in for his holiday because he only gets a limited amount of year he will then say to me oh you're so lucky you know you can go on holiday you can take holiday whenever you like but i'm like yeah but i don't get paid for it <laughs> so you know there are there are swings around swings around about of being your own boss and obviously working for a company but i've never known anything other than what i do right now and i i love it and it isn't for everyone but if somebody wanted to give it a go and there's an opportunity that you can maybe have a little bit on the side a little side shuffle perhaps side a side hustle um where you could set up a little business and have a little taste of it alongside a job if you didn't feel confident enough to take the leap then um maybe that's a, a way to test the waters to see if it's for you that's fantastic fantastic advice and um i look is forward it? i don't know yes it is no i i totally agree because you know i talked to a lot of people um and helped them through sort of setting up business and sort of could that sort of weighing up whether to take the leap so um yeah i'll make sure i get them to listen to this podcast episode oh. so, um, thank you. what i will say is i think that i've loved so much you know if anyone ever said to me laura one day you'll become a postmistress and you'll you'd be like running a restaurant and setting up, oh my word, like I would have never believed them. The amount of things that, I've renovated so many houses, but I'd never sort of renovated a commercial premises. And it was a whole different ball game and the rules and regulations, the health and safety procedures and you know, food safety and all of that. But now I've done it, I think, do you know what? I, I could do it quite easily again and I could advise someone if they wanted to, to do the same it's just yeah it's been a massive massive learning curve and i've loved i've loved every step of, of the way so far and i'm sure there'll be still more to come with what's going to happen over the next few months yeah and you know hopefully soon with your pilot training you'll be able to fly yourself out for some of these films <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i mean my flying's i was due to have a flying lesson last week but the weather put a stop to that and then this week has just been so busy in my preparation before going to Spain that I've decided I'm going to put, Spain's actually a really good place to learn to fly, mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to put it on hold until I come back in September. And I've, I've got to do 40, around 40 hours before I can fly solo. And I'm at, I think, 14 or 16 at the moment. So I've still got a way to go, but I'm going to come back and I'm going to smash it all out in one go. Wow. Sky's the limit. Exactly, exactly. There's a um, businesswoman, I can't remember her name, but I will um, send you her details. And she is a pilot um, as well. And she's just saying she has, you know, great ideas um, when she's flying. So I'll make sure I, um, I link you up. Well, thank oh, you so thank much you. for um, your time um, in your busy week before um, flying out to Spain. It's been an absolute thank delight you. to have you. Um, Love to talk to you. I will be heading to Lord Roberts on the green to have some of your cake while you're yes. on the <laughs> Come and see us. Oh, you need to come and see me when I'm there. Yeah, definitely. Or maybe I'll we'll do the washing up. <laughs> yeah, I'll come, and, I'll come and give you a hand. I'll bring my rubber gloves. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Liz. Oh, thank you so much for um, being a guest. Um, and for listeners, um, head um, for our next episode, I've got the fantastic Christian and Michelle Ewan joining me. They've just this week launched their new book the, um, called She Can 365, which is 365 stories about amazing business women. Um, and they are co-founders of Right On Time, um, which is helping you get into press. Um, so um, that's a really good one if you own a business um, um, and you're looking to get into um, the press and your local press. Um, and if you've been inspired by Laura's story um, and you want to spark your own success, um, then book in a call with me um, at sparksucceed.co.uk. So Laura, thank you again. I'll let you get off to your curry and gin now. <laughs> thank you. Have a lovely evening. Take care. Bye. Bye.